Good morning. Hey, good morning. Um, um, your um, gifts from us and uh, uh, Roxy sent those out uh, last week, but we're hearing that they are being stuck um, and held up in the postal system. And so if you haven't gotten it yet, then expect to get it before Tuesday of this week. And we will continue to refer back to those things. And uh, what you are receiving from us is an omer or a, 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 a vessel of sorghum seeds. Uh, there was an occasion where uh, God asked the children of Israel to keep an omer of manna, which was uh, an omer is about uh, two liters uh, vessel, which is large size. Um, and that was to remind them of where God had brought them from and what they had gone through. And as we go through this lesson series, we want to leave that with you so that you will know from beginning to end what you've gone through, uh, uh, what you've gone through and where God's brought you from. Uh, and uh, let us know if you have any questions about that. Uh, this ongoing series is designed Sam, they also to- got a sorghum strong wristband. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and um, you, you have your wristband uh, and that's something I keep mine on my keychain. Uh, you can wear it on your wrist. Uh, it's waterproof and it's Sister Bruce has hers on Sam. Okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> and it, it just simply is a reminder. Um, one of the things that you will see um, is that there are reminders all around you. The question is, are you listening? Are you paying attention to them? And if you want to program something positive in your own mind, did you know that uh, advertisers um, spend millions every year to program our minds? Yes. Those are called what? Commercials. Commercials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They spend millions, actually they spend billions in advertising the, the large companies. And why do they spend billions in advertising? To gain your business. Because they make billions from it. <laughs> <laughs> they spend billions because they make more billions. Right. Yeah. And the way that they make more billions is because that advertising will force, lead, and convince people to take action. Yes. So if you want to, you can begin to program and advertise in your own mind. Today's mm -hmm. uh, uh, series stops at the principle of praying. Mm -hmm. The principle of praying. It's one of the 12 sorghum principles. And I think prayer is one of the most uh, under- uh, misunderstood or underappreciated elements in a Christian's arsenal. Let me repeat that. Prayer is one of the most misunderstood and underappreciated elements in a Christian's arsenal. Mm -hmm. And so you'll find the things that you need in your arsenal where? In his word. In his word, right here. So does everybody have your word with you? Sir. It shouldn't be Sir. far. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be far. You can't go to battle without it. Right. You shouldn't find a Christian too far without it. That's right. Amen. Amen. You don't. You won't see my wife too far from me. Right. <laughs> something, right. you, something you value and care about, you keep it close, right? Amen. Amen. So the the principle of uh, of prayer that actually says praying, but actually it's the principle of prayer. So look at this statement. As a business consultant, one of the things that I will share with companies and institutions that will bring uh, me in is that your system is perfectly designed to get the results that you're currently getting. Let me repeat that. I share with them your system is currently designed to get the results that you're getting. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is if a particular company or, or university is having a particular problem, that means that their current system is perfectly de designed to produce that problem. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So if they want to change the results, what, what must they do? Change the system. system. Mm -hmm. If you have a student who's making C's and D's, then that student's approach to studying in academics, it's perfectly designed to get C's and D's. Mm -hmm. If that student wants A's and B's, what must he or she do? Change. Change the system. Yes, sir. You must do something different than what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. You must do it differently. Otherwise, you're expecting a different outcome while doing the same thing. Right. And what's that called? 
Insanity. insanity. That's called insanity. insanity. <laughs> That's called insanity. When you're expecting a different result, but you're doing the same thing. So with that as a backdrop, I would share with us your life. Your life is perfectly designed to get the results you are currently getting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your life is perfectly designed to get the results you are currently getting. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? And we 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 are living a life uh, we are living a life that um, dictates our um, our results. If, I mean, uh, example is if you eat healthy, or if you if you eat healthy, right? You're gonna have a you your body will show that. Or if you not eating healthy, your body will show that. I'm just using that as a basic example. Absolutely. Just, so that that gives it to you like right away. Yes. You eat right, you look fine. You don't eat right, son. You gotta you gotta. You, you, you might not be as fine. Yes. <laughs> yes. Or if you don't exercise and your body won't look or feel or be um, as the fit. body of a person right. who exercises. Mm -hmm. If you don't spend time with your children, then you won't have a relationship that's cultivated by time with your children. Amen? Amen. If you don't do a good job uh, at work, then you won't have the reputation of a person who does a good job at work. Right. Yeah. If you're a person who lets down your friends, then you won't have a reputation of being a trustworthy friend. Right. Amen. So our lives are perfectly designed to get the results that we are presently getting. So if we don't like our results, then what do we need to do? Change. Change. Now, who designed your life? Hmm. Mm. Who designed your life? Mm -hmm. God is the giver of life, but we actually. Ah, God gave us this gift that we call life. Yes, he did. Now, who's designed it? We have hmm. a path. <clears throat> and we also allow others to design it, don't we? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So we have to be one aware that our life, just like that advertising, is being influenced and impacted mm -hmm. by outside forces, right. by things around us, and by other people within our lives. It's something that you need to be aware of and to protect. Right. Because you are the one who's living that life, though. Mm -hmm. Because although others will impact it, the environment can influence it. It's you who's living that life, and you're the one who is actually dealing with the benefits and the results of that life. Hmm. Mm. That's something to chew on. Okay. Mm -hmm. The principle of prayer. These are the scriptures we will look at throughout uh, this morning. We'll look at 1 Samuel, where Hannah wants a son. We'll look at Isaiah 38, where Hezekiah needs what? Some time. Luke 18, where the parable of the importunate widow who refused to be uh, kept unsatisfied. And also Luke 18, the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. And a couple of others we'll look at. So last week, we learned something new, didn't we? Yes, we did. We learned about dendrochronology. Uh -huh. And that it will have a spiritual impact upon our lives. We also uh -huh. learned that the science of tree rings and the message that they hold. Uh -huh. And that like this tree stump that we I see. I saw some the tree somewhere, somewhere over there. Not How's here. that? Somewhere. Trees, yeah, you know, like when they fall and they cut them. So, uh, secure it. So the 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 tree rings tell us stories about the life of that tree. Yes. And we will have metaphorical rings within us that will tell God about our lives. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, 
Trees stand in one spot for hundreds of years, don't they? Yes. Do you have a tree on your property right now? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody have a tree on your property? Raise your hand. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is the tree in the same spot right now as it was last night when you went to bed? Yes, it yes. is. Yes. <laughs> Didn't Has it know. been in that same spot since you moved into that house? Yes. <laughs> okay. So it's not going anywhere, is it? No. No. But the question is, are they just idle doing nothing, though? No. Nope. They're growing. Mm -hmm. That tree is very busy doing things that a non-observant person might not ever notice. Mm-hmm. But if you look at this, this stump here, can't you see the things that were going on with this tree in this glance? Yes, growing. Doesn't it become very obvious that this tree had a very um, uh, dynamic life? Mm -hmm. Yes. But it takes some patience and time to be able to see that. Yes. You can't see the rings being formed in 20 seconds, can you? No. You can't see the rings being formed in 20 days. Mm -mm. But when you look over the course of 20 years, now you can begin to see some of the picture. Right. Not all, but some. Yes. Yes. So I want this picture here to be a picture that you reflect upon over the next several weeks. Mm -hmm. See this picture? Everybody see that? Yes. And I introduced it to you last week, right? Right. Yes. And there are times when um, we find ourselves in a space and a place that is not desirable. Anyone ever been in a space and a place in your life that's not desirable? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes. And when you find yourself in those spaces, it's usually because you don't have the means by which to extricate yourself from that situation. Right. You got to be in it, even though you don't want to be in it. Amen? Amen. Amen. That can be tough. Why? Mm. Why can that be tough? Because you have no control over the situation at the moment. You have no control. And you don't like what's happening to you. Right. And it's difficult. Yeah. And at times we get impatient. Yes. And it seems like it's taking forever, doesn't it? Mm hmm But is it yeah. really taking forever? Look at that stump. Is it really taking forever? If you yeah. were to look at this stump and you were to count out to about the 18th ring, mm -hmm. everybody, everybody see about where the 18th ring is? I'm going to show it to you. See about right here? Yes. OK. Now, when, you, when this tree looks back, and it's way out here. You see how insignificant that one year may seem? Right. <laughs> it seems like a real big deal when you're going through it, doesn't it? Yes, yes. At that time, it's like a big deal. <clears throat> when you get out of here, it's just a blip on the radar, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Amen. So when we see this picture here and we find ourselves in a situation that, that seems to be untenable, remember this. When you can go nowhere in the world mm. when you can go nowhere in the world you can still grow anywhere in the spirit amen mm -hmm. that's powerful yes when you can go nowhere in the world right now you can still grow anywhere in the spirit. Yes. Look at this plant. This plant cannot move. It's been bound stationary. But it can still grow. Mm -hmm. I yes. might not be able to move, but I can still grow. Say it with me. I might yes. not be able to move, 
but I can still feel grow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you cannot even move your feet, mm. <clears throat> then try moving just your mind. Your mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. can't even move your feet, mm. you may find yourself in a situation where you can't go anywhere economically, socially, and otherwise. How long were the children in Israel in Egypt? 400 and something years. Yeah. 430 <laughs> years. Mm -hmm. You ever been locked down for 430 years? <laughs> no. Okay. So it's relative, isn't it? Yes. See, we serve a God who doesn't look at things like we do. Mm. You look at that this tree stump, and all you can think about is the, is the, is the tree ring that you are presently in. Mm -hmm. And that's all you can think about is today. Yes. We serve a God who's already been out here to the outer edge. When mm. this tree is right here growing, God's out here. Uh -huh. God already knows about these, these times. He's mm -hmm. already seen it. He's the architect of it. Yes. He's not thinking just about today. But oftentimes we do. Mm -hmm. So if you can't move your feet, then try just moving your mind. Because they might be able to control your feet. Yeah. But you, you control your mind. Yes. Mm. And if a plant can grow where it wants to, do you see this plant growing? Mm -hmm. Do you all see that? You see what I see? Yes. Do you see that plant actually reaching? Yes. So if a plant can grow where it wants to. Now, mm. in the order of creation, in the order of creation, is a bird a higher being than a plant? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. A bird is a higher being than a plant. Yes. Are we a higher being than a bird? Yes. Then yes. we should therefore be a higher being than a plant. Is that right? Yes. Everybody with me? Uh -huh. So yeah. we are a higher being than a plant. Mm -hmm. And if a plant can grow where it wants to, then surely, surely your soul can pray where you choose to. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Folks, we've talked in this series that we are not just a physical being. Yeah. In fact, we are a spiritual being on a physical journey. Not a physical being on a spiritual journey. That makes a lot of difference when you understand that. Mm -hmm. See what this plan is capable of? Mm -hmm. Just because you didn't know the plant could do it doesn't mean that the plant can't do it. Right. Hmm. It knew what it was capable of doing. We oftentimes don't even know what we're capable of doing. Mm. Wow. Because the deceiver has made you think that you're not who you are. We oftentimes are focusing on the wrong thing. There's much more power within us than we actually realize. So we should spend much more time in our present situation praying, seeking the face of God, growing toward God. Because all you have to do is look at this plant and, and see if it can do this, what or oh what am I capable of doing? Mm. Yes. Amen? Amen. Okay. So 
as we've gone through this series of lessons, people have asked, why are we comparing things to the sorghum seed? Why are we looking at other things? It's because we have talked with you about God can be seen and heard all around us. He can be heard in his holy and divine word. Amen? Amen. He can be seen in his created world, nature. Yes. And he can be heard and seen in Christians. Mm -hmm. And so it's a wonderful example. So in the times when we're asking, where is God? And you may not have this with you or upon you as you're walking down the street. What do you have? Mm -hmm. You have the created world all around you. Yes. Every moment of the day. So we look at the Bible, we look at the Farmer's Almanac to be able to see those examples. And I like taking those examples that are right in front of us and are obvious to teach from. Because it makes a very clear example. Amen? Amen. Okay. So the principle of prayer is what we will talk about today. And that principle of prayer the theme there is waiting for rain. We may find ourselves in situations that we cannot control. So rain is metaphorically, that's the blessing that you want. Which may not come at the time that you are asking for it. But it doesn't mean that it's not on its way. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. But what do I do? What do you do? What do we do? from the time that the prayer is sent to the time that the prayer is answered. Wait faithfully. Wait faithfully, okay. What else do we do? Keep working. Sometimes we wait impatiently, don't we? Yes, yes. Like I just prayed to you, God, at 7.02 a.m. <laughs> and it's 7.03 and I still don't have that great life change that I wanted. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Right, like God is a microwave oven. Mm -mm. We put our coffee in there, we, we push the button, and we sit there and wait mm -hmm. impatiently. Well, there is something more that we should be doing because we need to be ready for that blessing. We need to be in a position that we can receive it. We need to be capable of growing. So the rain comes and the rain's going to go into a vessel. Amen. Yes. Well, what kind of vessel do are we? Mm -hmm. Is it cracked with holes in it? So that as soon as the blessing comes down, it's going to just flow away. Hmm. Mm. It is a small vessel that cannot even receive the blessing that's coming. Mm. Well, you decide how large your vessel is. Yeah. You decide what kind of shape your vessel is in. In fact, there are some times we need time hmm. to get ourselves together. Yeah. Because then we're just simply going to waste the blessing that God sent to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. So while you're waiting on God and impatiently waiting on him, we should be getting busy getting ourselves ready for the rain. Yes, yes. And that's a term we use in sorghum. We call it working while waiting. Working yeah. while waiting. Yes. Working while waiting. Mm -hmm. Not just wasting time while waiting. Yes. Because your assumption, my assumption would be is that I'm perfectly set, God. I'm perfectly straight for you to bless me. Mm. I don't need to do anything while waiting for you. Mm. I'm good. Go ahead mm. and do your thing. Mm. Well, maybe the reason, Sam, that you were in need of prayer or you're waiting on this blessing is because of something you did or didn't do. Yeah. Hmm. So, a few questions for us. We've covered this previously. What is prayer? Do I pray? When do I pray? Why do I pray? Prayer is not something 
That is only when it's an emergency. It's not a 911 call. Let me ask you this. Anyone ever made a 911 call? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Do you use your phone to only make 911 calls? No. Uh -huh. No. Then why do we use prayer to only make 911 calls to God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because most of our, or many times, our prayers are just that. Wow. Oh, God, it's me. I'm in a crisis. Oh, God, please, 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 right now. I need that now, 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 now. <laughs> yes, yes. But instead, good morning, God. Mm. I've just you. gained consciousness. I'm just aware that I'm alive and awake on this morning. Mm. Thank you for the blessing of life. Thank you for all that you've done for me. Thank you for allowing me to be in my right mind this morning. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yes. and other times throughout the day throughout the week why do we pray it's a great question okay mm -hmm. a couple of warm-up questions for us why does the strength of a relationship greatly influence all decisions made within that relationship when you think about your personal relationships with people why does the strength of that relationship greatly influence all the decisions made within that relationship? Mm -hmm. Is that you, clear to that question yeah. clear? Yes. The stronger the relationship, that also means the more intimately you know that person. A, a yes. strong relationship is not, you don't get to a strong relationship without um, intimacy and knowledge of a person. Has anyone, anyone ever called, has anyone ever called someone to help them move? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Do you, do you call casual acquaintances or people you have a real strong relationship with? Um, people you have a real strong relationship with. You can count on them. <laughs> Why is that? You can oh, count on them. You can count on them. And they're getting ready to have to work real hard for you. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Have you ever had to leave your kids overnight in someone else's care on an emergency? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it just anybody, or do you have a strong relationship with the people you're going to do that? Strong. Oh. Yes. So the strength of the relationship impacts everything that goes on with that relationship. Yes. How does our relationship with God affect our prayer life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does it? If you only come to him in mm -hmm. an emergency situation, then, and you expect him to show up, but you don't ever come to him just <laughs> leisurely or casually, ah. then you have a casual relationship with him. Ah, I think she said something. Yes. You only call me when you need something from me, and you mm -hmm. only call me when you have a desperate, dire need. Right. You never call me to say, how, hello, I'm think, just thinking about you. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Does hmm. your relationship with God need to change? That's rhetorical. I don't want you to answer that out loud, but I want you to think about that during the course of this week. Mm -hmm. Because if the first two questions make sense, then this last question needs to resonate with us, doesn't it? Yes. And only only each of us can answer that for ourselves. Ooh. So, has anyone ever heard of Toastmasters? Mm -hmm. Anybody? What is Toastmasters? Yes. Can someone tell me? Uh, it's a, they give uh, organized speeches and teach people how to public speaking and they have a contest about it. That is correct. If you look on the screen, they've been around uh, since 1924. They've had more than 4 million people in 140 countries and they set organized speeches when they meet. They have a global speaking championship where over 33,000 people compete to be the best speaker on the planet. Wow. 
So that's mm -hmm. what Toastmasters does. Toastmasters teaches millions of people to talk. Mm -hmm. I've been involved with universities all over this country. I've seen courses on speeching or speech making, courses on presentations. But in the communication process, listening is far more important than talking. Mm -hmm. Far more important than talking. Right. So when we look at the principle of prayer as a part of the Sorghum Principle series, it's a communication process between us and God. So the principle of prayer states there is a relationship that all Christians share with God as illustrated by the prayer triangle on the right that we've shared before, which connects us to God and the word of God through the Holy Spirit study and prayer. And just as our human to human relationships are supported by effective communication, our spiritual relationships with God is driven by the effectiveness of our prayer life, which is part of that spiritual communication process. Prayer is when we talk to God. Amen? Yes. Our study and teaching of the scriptures is when we listen. Mm -hmm. And as in any communication process, listening is far more important than talking. If we listen better, we will be able to pray better. Mm -hmm. Just like in your relationships with people close to you, if you know them better, doesn't it make it easier for you to talk to them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. If you know them better, don't you know what you can get them to do or ask them for? Yes. Mm-hmm. So my daughter has, has told my son before, whoa, 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 before you go in to ask him, you need to get your, you need to get your stuff straight. Yes. <laughs> he's going to ask you these questions. And if you don't have the answer to him, he's going to send you right out. So save yourself the trouble and let's walk through this. <laughs> and she knows he'll have a better chance of getting to the end of what he want to ask for. Right. So okay. we need to be more aware of that. Now, Let's look at Hezekiah and prayer. Scripture tells us in Isaiah 38 that in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Mm -hmm. Sick unto death means what? Getting ready to die. Getting ready to die. He had some horrible affliction and he was getting ready to die. Yes. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. If God tells you that, then that's, that's a serious proclamation, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Hezekiah mm. knew he was in trouble, didn't he? Yes, he did. Now, who came and told Hezekiah that? The prophet. Okay. Isaiah. Isaiah did. Did Hezekiah make his plea to Isaiah? No. Hmm. Was Isaiah, was Isaiah there and told him? Yes. Yes, he was. Yes. Isaiah was there. Isaiah came and broke the news to him. But who did Hezekiah appeal to? The Lord. Come on now. The Y'all see this? Yes. He didn't fall on his knees and beg Isaiah. Right. He, you see this triangle? Yes. Hezekiah had a connection to God. Mm -hmm. He had a strong relationship with God. If you have a strong relationship with, let's just say, um, uh, the mayor of your city, and you've got a problem that you need fixing and only the mayor can authorize it. And you know the mayor really well and, have, and you have his or her phone number. Are you calling one of their underlings? No, no. <laughs> Who are you calling? The mayor. You're calling directly to the mayor 
to get an answer to your situation. Right. Well, who did Hezekiah call? Verse Hello. 2 says, Then Hezekiah turned his face, his face toward the wall, the wall prayed unto the and Lord. prayed unto the Lord. Yes. He didn't call somebody else. He didn't deal with somebody else. He went straight to the source. Yes, yes. He was in crisis and he went straight to the source. Now that also says he had God's phone number, doesn't he? Mm -hmm, yes. Okay. Yeah. He had God's phone number. Now, it's one thing if you have the mayor's phone number. It's yet another thing if the mayor, when he sees call waiting as you, whether he's <laughs> going to answer or not. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. So, God Amen. saw Hezekiah calling, didn't he? Yes, he did. Oh, you know he did. Yes. Lots of people call upon the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. What did Jesus say? There will come right. a time when many will say what? Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. And he will say what? Lord, Lord. Yeah, I never knew you. I <laughs> never knew you. You work on iniquity. So lots of people will have his phone number. The question is, will he pick up the phone? So here it says, then Hezekiah, Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. So it's important that we have an active and capable prayer life, isn't it? Yes, yes. In Hezekiah's time of need, it wasn't the time then to start learning how to pray, was it? No. It wasn't the time then to begin doing the fundamentals of prayer life. Mm -hmm. He turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. That was his first response. Right. After he was told that he was going to die, his first response was then. When did he do it? Then. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was his first response. Right. And said, remember now, O Lord. Remember means something had to have happened beforehand, doesn't it? Yes. So he didn't just begin his relationship with God at that moment. Mm -hmm. He already had a reputation built upon previous actions and habits. Yes. That he now was able to call upon in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Remember now, O oh Lord, I beseech thee, how yes. I have walked before thee in truth yes. and with a perfect heart. He had done things and now was calling in to ask God to, in light of his personal life, his mm -hmm. personal walk, give some consideration. Yes. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Mm -hmm. So prayer isn't just a me making a 911 call to God. We can see that Hezekiah is making a 911 call, isn't he? Yes. But he apparently had made other phone calls over the days, the weeks, the months, and the years right. to the same God. Yes. And wasn't asking for something in every one of those things. Mm -hmm. I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And have done that which in which is good in thy sight. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yes. We see Hannah in First Samuel. Let me let me pause for a second. Are there any questions that anyone has or comments about Hezekiah? No questions, Brother Hall. But I see with Hezekiah, <clears throat> with Hezekiah, his relationship that he had with God. The same thing with us. Sometimes we have a good relationship with people, but we don't want to bother them per se. We say we don't want to bother them. And when they hear about our problems, they'll say, well, why, why didn't you come to me? You know, I could have helped you with that. Mm. And, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, God feels the same way. You know, we know that he's there, but we don't go to him. You know, we, we figured, oh, you know, I, can't, I don't want to bother God with this again. Let me just try to handle this on my own. And, wow. So he's there, right there, waiting on us just to come to him. He, he has to help. Amen. And sometimes, Sister um, Grimes, 
it may be because we know we have not always walked before him in truth. And we yeah. know that we haven't always had a perfect heart. And mm -hmm. we know that we haven't always done that which is good in his sight. Right. So it makes us a bit tenuous to go to him now. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. means we have to change that. Yes. We have to correct that so that we will be in a much better position to make that request. Yes. Similar to a child and a parent. Mm -hmm. A child won't hesitate to go to a parent in need when the child knows that he or she has done what's required. Mm -hmm. We are, we are against guilty distance when we realize, you know, I haven't always done what I needed to do. And my parent knows this. Now mm -hmm. I've got to go and ask for some assistance when I know I haven't been the model, model um, child. Mm -hmm. So uh, Hannah wants a son. She actually reached out and prayed unto God. Mm -hmm. She actually revealed that she had some history as well. Those are examples of when those individuals didn't just make a 911 call. And finally, here with Daniel, we see Daniel in Daniel 10, verse number 12. When Daniel was in need, he made a call. And then it says, then he said to me, do not fear Daniel, for from the first time that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel were in Egypt for 430 years. Daniel was 21 days being delayed. Sometimes that will be a distance between your request and your deliverance. Mm. It may be 21 days. It may be some years. Mm. But the question is, what are we doing during that time? Yes. As we saw from the children of Israel, they had challenges. They had challenges uh, during that time, and they would they had difficulties once they were released, weren't they? Yes. So God said unto them in Exodus three and seven, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. He's there, he's listening. And we need to be more in prayer. We shared this slide before. There are many reasons for which we should pray. We should pray regularly. We should pray for our enemies. We should pray secretly and honestly. We should pray with others. If we pray, we will receive. Prayer will keep us from sin. Prayer will give us courage, and we can talk to God about anything. We should pray with confidence. Prayer involves asking. We should pray in Jesus' name. We should pray about everything. We should be thankful. Mm -hmm. We should pray at all times without ceasing. We should pray for the sick and others in need and not just selfishly about ourselves. And prayer involves us confessing and getting right with God. The fruit of the spirit that we've been talking about is there for us. It's our goal to ensure that all elements of the fruit of the Spirit are revealed and seen in our lives in good measure. We've gone through them. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith or faithfulness, meekness last week, and today, self-control. Self-control. It's interesting that the Holy Spirit left this one for last, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Because this one focuses on us. Mm -hmm. Our ability to bridle our tongues and restrict our hands. Yes. And control our very essence. Mm -hmm. Which we know as mature adults, sometimes that's the toughest thing to do, isn't it? Yes, it is. So, when we look at the fruit of the spirit and self-control, 
and we were hasting through these questions, how do you demonstrate self-control to someone inside the church? Mm -hmm. mm. Now, if we say we have the fruit of the spirit, then we need to know what it looks like. That's true. Yeah. How do we demonstrate self-control to someone outside of the church? Hmm. And then what are the observable results of demonstrated self-control? How do you know when a person has it? How do you know when you have it? Mm -hmm. But if we have the fruit of the spirit, we should have self-control. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we've taught ongoingly, and I want to encourage you this week to find ways in which you can see God at work. Because if you want to see God in your crisis, you want to see God in your life, look for him. He is there. Mm -hmm just like the tree is there, sometimes silently working. Yes. And we have to listen. God. If you can't even move your feet, then try just moving your mind. Mm. Mm -hmm. Remember the plant? Remember this image? We talked yeah. with you last week about this term called phototropism, yes? Mm -hmm. And that is what? <clears throat> the growth, of an, the growth of an organism in a response to a light stimulus. There you go. So photo means light, tropism means turning a movement. So mm -hmm. it's the turning and movement to light. And we see this plant is doing that. Yeah. In the religious world, theology is the study of God and religion. Mm -hmm. Theo is Greek for God. Theology means study, so it's God's study. I'm going to share with you a new term. Theotropism. Mm -hmm. The plant mm -hmm. has phototropism. Theotropism is the growth of a Christian mm. in response to God's light stimulus. Y'all mm. with me? That's a, that's a Bible docent definition? That's a Bible docent definition. Yeah. You won't find that anywhere else. <laughs> oh, okay. Theotropism is the it's growth hellion. of Christ, growth of Christians in response to God's light stimulus. Mm -hmm. So we should be about that, shouldn't we? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If God were to take a picture of us, we should be leaning toward him. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. We should be stretching out. When your feet can't move, mm -hmm. you should still be able to grow towards the light. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I said something there, right? You said that's yes, true, bro. Yes, sir. <laughs> if a plant can grow where it wants to, mm -hmm. your soul can pray where you choose to. Yeah. Wow. Growth is a choice, people. We've shared that previously. Yes. How do I know growth is a choice? Look. Mm -hmm. Look right there. Yeah. Tell me what that is. Mm, growth. That plant could have chosen to do nothing. Mm hmm. But in fact, we see it chose to do something. Yes. So self-control requires us to know something, think something, say something, and do something. Mm -hmm. We want to have the fruit of the spirit, then we need to know something, we need to think something, we need to say something, and we need to do something. Look at the plant. Now you tell me we're smarter in a higher form of life than the plant, right? Yes. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Mm. Sometimes we don't have enough sense to grow toward the light of God. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So we've shared this triangle before. This helps us. We need to be aware. We need to understand and appreciate God in our lives. As we wind to a close this morning, we're going through these 12 Sorghum principles. This week was a principle of prayer. Next week will be the principle of P3, which is patience, perseverance, and persistence. We must get um, brother, 
to prepare adequately really? and to produce. Brother, <clears throat> yes. Brother Sam, this is sweet. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to, um, I really appreciate that about self-discipline and how do you know. And on my journey, my walk in life, I know that um, I'm really getting there with self-discipline and regardless, sometimes, you know, you try to, you know, things try to trip you off, people, places, or things. Mm -hmm. But I know in my life that you must work on self-discipline. Yes. And I've been doing that for the last couple of years or the last week or so or whenever, mm -hmm. because I be trying to challenge all the time with that. But I really thank you for um, giving, like you said, also to listen. And that's how I learned so much by listening. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes by not talking, it's to listen. And I really thank you for that. And self-discipline is something that we got to want, just like yep. prayer and everything else. And I think that's really a good point that you made, and I really appreciate it. Well, yeah. thank you for sharing. You're absolutely right. Uh, I, I want to expand upon a point you just made there, sweetie. Uh, you said it's, it's got to be something that you want. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, a coach will tell a player, a player, a player has to want to get better and has to want to be critiqued. There are some players who won't listen to feedback and critique, and they won't get as good as they can. When right. there are other players who will say, I'm good, but I can be better. Can you please tell me how? And they're humble enough to receive it. We have to be willing <laughs> to get better. And sometimes, and sometimes you have to move yourself away in order to get stronger. It's not that you're being mad and upset, but we have to do what we have to do to better qualify us as Christians as long as you're doing it for the right reason mm -hmm. and that's through Jesus Christ who strengthened us and that's the way I do it for myself is because you have to sometimes just get away from everything and you know what I'm saying in order to grow because sometimes if you stay in a situation you will never grow I don't care how bad you want it because people are going to always try to remind you of things or uh, and so quick to say, you're not changing, you're not this, and you're not that, and you know that you are. So you have to learn, too, to take all those criticism or whatever they are and build them for your strength in order to prove to yourself in God. And that's the main thing that I um, perceive from all these lessons and learning. It helps me to do what I need to do because I'm willing and wanting to do what's right. Thank you. Yeah. That's excellent. So next week, we have the principle of P3, which will be patience, perseverance, and persistence. Um, and there's a possibility, if we continue, there is a series that we may share with you called God's Sunflower Seeds. Did everyone see that? Mm -hmm. See how that sunflower is spelled? Yes. <laughs> God's oh, yeah. Sunflower Seeds. Mm -hmm. And there will be a new term that we will share with you. We've talked about phototropism, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, what was the other tropism I just shared with you? Theo. Theo. Theo tropism. So phototropism is what? The light. Moving light. toward the light. light. Theo tropism oh. is what? Growth of a Christian. Growth of a Christian. Oh, God. Of God. Mm -hmm. And there's a term called helio tropism. <laughs> helio. H E L I O tropism. <laughs> Anyone have a crack at that one? Helio means something. Uh, what it means something, Mama. <laughs> Healy. Helio. It means is something. It, it can't. Helio tropism is when a plant. Mm -hmm. Bring me my cup out. Follow. Please, when a plant follows the sun. Mm. Sunflowers actually follow the sun yeah. from the time it comes up in the morning yeah. to the time it sets in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. The sunflower, and that's how it's got its name, yeah. the sunflower actually changes its face mm. and follows the sun all day. Did you know that? No. The sunflower actually moves all day and uh. follows the sun. Mm. So sunflowers follow the sun throughout the day as Christians should follow the sun, S-O-N, throughout mm. their lives. 
Amen. So if we do share this, you will learn more about heliotropism and how we need to be, if a sunflower, and for years they didn't know how or why it did it. Mm -hmm. A sunflower, and oh, here's one other thing that's interesting about that. So what the sun rises in what direction and sets in what direction? Rises in the east and sets in the west. Okay, so thank you, Sister Home. It rises in the east and sets in the west, right? So what did I tell you that sunflowers do every day? Follow the, follow the sun. They follow the sun. How many All days? All day. All day. One day? All, All day. day. Every day. Every day. So mm -hmm. the sun rises in the, in the east? Yes. So the sunflower faces the east, and then at the end of the day, it's facing which way? The west. West? Really? So what about the next morning? The east. Great. Mm -hmm. It resets at night, folks. Mm -hmm. Sunflower faces east in the morning. Mm -hmm. It follows the sun all day long, mm -hmm. facing the west at night. Mm -hmm. And overnight, it changes back and faces it and waits for the sun. Does it really do that? <laughs> mm. You want to know more about God than just stop, listen, and mm -hmm. pay attention. Mm. He's talking to us all around us. Mm. Yes. That's our time this morning. That's some good stuff, Sam. Thank you all very, very much. Be blessed this week. Thank you. Make yourself a blessing to someone else. Yes. And spend time making your life what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Have the power within the word of God. You have the understanding. Now it's just a matter of are you focused and are you intentional about doing it? Yeah. Mm. God bless, and we will see you next week. Thank you for the lesson. Thank uh, you. Everybody have a good day. God bless. Yes. You all have an now, amazing day. Uh, Tanya said now she want to have a sunflower to keep. So I guess that's our mm -hmm. next thing. <laughs> uh, Galaxy Note 10, it's a sister. You in the, uh, I don't have your name or number. I'm looking at you right now on the screen, and you had your beautiful kitchen open a little while ago. <laughs> Does she hear me? Oh, she just took her picture off. I don't know who that is. Galaxy Note 10, I don't know who that is. It says Janice Williams. Janice Janice, Janice, uh, Janice, 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 Janice. Will you see it in a chat? No, I see it on the screen. She just changed. She just took a picture off, so her name came up. My picture no. has always been up. Yeah, that's, that's Janice. Janice. That's different, Sam. Oh, it must have switched. She must have no. hung up. No, it's Galaxy Note 10 Plus. It's still up there. It's okay. All right, I'm just All trying right. to make sure I uh, correlate everybody. And some people, it's a three, four, seven. Four two five seven seven one one. Whose number is that? People don't know their own numbers. The hall from Brooklyn, oh, New York. Oh, you told me that. That's right. You told me. I, I oh. put that one in. Thank you. I have that one. I just got to remember now because the name is not up. And seven one eight. Okay. And the the Galaxy Note ten is Stanley Hall. He 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 put on his um. He, he used his tablet, and we're using the phone. So it's oh, both. Oh, so it's both of y'all. Okay, good, good. Okay, thank you so much, brother and sister Hall. I have you in my phone now. Okay. Right. Good. Now okay. I know that. Okay. And 718 um, 718-277-4399. Hey, I am Iris Musa. I was on last week. And you recognize me from okay. Joyce Sam. All right. All right. Yes. You all have a phenomenal week. Um, God bless and um, all of that. Mr. Rob. Yes. Coming on Tuesday night or Thursday night this week. Um, I am. I'm going to send out an email blast, um, Sister Grimes. I did say I was going to do that, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. So I just wanted you know, to make and well, invite you. Well, the thing is, out, out of um, and this is what I'm trying to figure out. On Thursday, I got word that I will be in New Orleans doing training, not okay. New Orleans, East Baton Rouge. And so I'm trying to decide 
because we will be training all day Thursday, all day Friday. And I know my mom would tell me, Roxy, you don't, you shouldn't do yep. that on Thursday I'm night. Change. <laughs> don't push it. I just wanted to double check. So I need to let everyone know. So I'm going to send an email blast to let everyone know we're doing mental health first aid training for a mayor's office, for um, the mayor's office in East Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. And so they just finalized it and I have to go. I wasn't going. So no I was going to try to do the class anyway, but I think it'll be a really long day for me. Yes, it would be. Yes. And so Don't. I'm going to send out an email blast tomorrow, Sister Grimes, and what I'm going to do is say that the Synergy Empowerment will start in September. You see what I'm saying? But we still have our Synergy meeting the last Thursday. Right. Okay. Does Sounds that good. make sense? And so that's yeah. what I'm going to do. Okay. And so good. all of us need to be working on our stuff anyway. Yes, exactly. Uh, so I, will send, I will send that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, Sister Grimes, let me know when you get your stuff, okay? We'll do. We'll do. All right. Y'all have a great day. Tell us to send you some more, Sister Grimes. You want you. <laughs> I already we are I already told if that's the case. And mama, Sister Bunny says she's praying for you. Thank you, dear. She had to I go to church. It. Okay. All right, most of them going to church. Thirty one people left. I mean it's Yeah, it was a great class this it morning. Was a it was big a lot. Class. Okay. It was a big class. It was a big class. Hey, All right. hey cousin. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> Bye. Hey guys. Hey auntie. Hey. <laughs> All right, y'all take care. God bless. Bye bye. Hey, we're not going to pray. We don't have a prayer. Uh, uh, he prays at the top of class, Mom. Okay. You know? yeah. okay. Okay. All, All right. right. Bye bye. bye, -bye.